Yes, people, welcome back. First of all, thank you for the feedback on the last video. Really appreciate it. Today, we do have another tactical analysis. It's Xavi at Barcelona. Now, if we look in the Discord, Cami here has actually requested it, but he's also posted a video. So this video is also influenced by how Barcelona are building a midfield dynasty. Again, the purest YouTube channel. So make sure you go and check it out. What I did, I watched that video, of course, but then I watched a very, very good Barcelona game against Real Madrid in the Super Copa, where they won. 3-1 a very good display so I watched that game I broke it down checked how they build up how they approach the middle third the final third but also some defensive and transitional notes now let's get stuck into the video Just like the last video, we are going to kick this one off by showing you some goals quickly in Football Manager because I want to show you guys the beautiful football that it can play in Football Manager. Some of you guys may have saw this goal on Twitter. It was a very good goal away to PSG where we won this game. I would say convincingly but it weren't they had the higher xg though we did have more of the ball we saw more of the ball they created two clear cuts we created one we had seven long shots unfortunately but it is the goal that we all came to see so the goal started from our build up as well and in the clip you're going to see a couple of things you're going to see our counter press as well because we do lose the ball so here's alonzo there's us trying to play out from the back we lose the ball here's the counter press trying to win the ball back instantly and we do with dembele here's Lewandowski. he plays it out wide so there, I wouldn't say there was a heavy focus on the left-hand side or we overloaded on the left-hand side. You can see there's more of a focus on the left-hand side with Dembele though or Fati this time. Fati, he's one-on-one -on -one with Mendes and this allows Lewandowski just to switch the play and he's one-on-one -on -one with Mendes. Here's Fati, he plays it back to Sergio Roberto. Here's Kunde now, the right back, brings it forward. Lewandowski plays it back to Sergio Roberto. Kunde out wide to Fati and he plays it all the way back to Ter Stegen. Ter Stegen on the ball, here's Arujo. Christiansen just gonna try and stop it again and we almost got the 3-2-5 shape with Christiansen, Arujo and Kunde the back three we've got our two in midfield but we just don't have I got a man down here yeah totally forgot in this game we also had a man down here's Dembele Alonso De Jong look at the football the build up we still have the ball by the way we still have the ball from when we originally run it Christian Sim plays it out wide to Kunde it's slow it's patient here's Kunde Roberto to De Jong De Jong out wide to Alonso Frankie D what was I saying Frankie De Jong for here's Dembele Dembele out wide finally we break through here's Roberto Farte Roberto what a goal absolute screamer of a goal and here's another goal against Seville display and Barcelona displaying some excellent football Pedri to Arujo Sergio now Frankie de Jong Christensen we're gonna work the ball out to the left hand side hopefully Frankie de Jong has Arujo now Sergio Pedri you can see the positions as well the players in their correct position couldn't they Arujo it's all patient all patient football the Barcelona way this is what we wanted to see in football manager here's Sergio De Jong Gavi now coming inside playing narrow allowing Balde to overlap exactly what we want Pedri running inside that channel lovely goal and there we saw a few things play out the left back holding his shape the nice little patient build up Pedri attacking the channels now though now we are going to look at the tactical analysis from real life So here are the Super Cup lineups. Real Madrid using a 4-3-3. Barcelona using a 4-2-3-1 on paper. We do know formations are more so just numbers rather than a set formation that Barcelona would use in a game. But typically, Barcelona's starting formation may be a 4-3-3. Today, we are looking at their 4-2-3-1. So they did line up with Ter Stegen in goal. Alejandro Balde as the left back. Aruja as the right back. Kunde and Christiansen as the two centre backs. Frankie de Jong and Sergio as the two double pivots. We got Gavi on the left hand side side then Bele on the right hand side Pedri as the uh, number 10 right behind Lewandowski Gavi has a very intriguing role he's a midfielder playing as a left of winger and well if you watch that video that I posted just a little earlier from the impurest football you kind of understand his role in this formation So 
So first of all, we can look at how Barcelona look to build up. Barcelona build up against Real Madrid. Ter Stegen often played a medium ranged goal kick when Barcelona were man marked. Ter Stegen kicks long into space in front or behind the Real Madrid back line. I also checked against um, Girona to see if this was kind of a similar pattern throughout the whole season. And yeah, the very first goal kick against Girona, Ter Stegen aimed to kick it long. They used a 4 plus 2 shape and a 4 plus 1 shape build up. Fullbacks held their width constantly. Sergio was always in the pivot, but Frankie de Jong had the freedom to roam during build up. So I did mention that they used a 4 plus 2 or a 4 plus 1. And that also that really depended on Frankie de Jong. Sometimes he was the 2 in a double pivot or sometimes he moved advanced higher up the pitch. If Frankie de Jong was holding a high position, Pedri would look to rotate positions and drop to be in a pivot with Sergio. The wingers and central forward remained high, pinning back the Real Madrid defence. Compliments when Ten Stegen goes long as it creates space in between the defensive lines and the midfield lines. Real Madrid's defensive line and midfield line. The goalkeeper played as a ball playing goalkeeper, often being an extra player to allow that numerical advantage at the first moments of build up the first line of Real Madrid's pressure. So what would usually happen during goal kicks? Here we can see that Real Madrid are man marking Barcelona. Ter Stegen has the ball at his feet here and we can see the little space here. So if I grab the little box, we can see the space in between the defensive line and the midfield line as well. And this then allows Pedri to move into the space and Ter Stegen to go long. And also sometimes Frankie de Jong did have that license to roam. So if he wanted to move into that advanced area, then Pedri will just drop deep from the attacking midfielder area. And here we can see still Barcelona are building Building up with that four plus two, it's just now Frankie de Jong and Pedri have swapped positional responsibilities. This image, we can see the two things happening again, not for the first time. Frankie de Jong and Pedri are swapping position responsibilities. Frankie de Jong has dropped and now Pedri is moving advanced higher up. The swapping responsibilities. Pedri is also moving to be that more advanced midfielder, allowing Ter Stegen to then play that more direct pass. Frankie de Jong did play an intriguing role, often roaming and interchanging. Here, the centre back has pushed forward. So, Frankie de Jong has dropped back slightly and he's moved and covering that left sided centre back position. And lastly, Barcelona didn't just kick it long every single time they had the ball in those deeper areas or when Ter Stegen had the ball. When Real Madrid couldn't organise their high press quickly enough, Barca then looked to keep it short and build up from the goal kick. Now moving on to the middle third, how Barcelona tried to progress into the final third. Barcelona had a shape resembling that of a 3-2-5. One full back tucks inside, the right back typically for the three, and the left back joins the attack line of five, and he joins the wingers, central midfielder, and the attacking midfielder on this day was Pedri. There was more of a focus to play and build up down the left hand side. The left back would overlap the left winger, allowing the left winger to then drop or position himself narrowly. The centre forward also shifted towards the left hand side and he dropped deep to receive the ball this created a heavy overload and focus down the left hand side the central forward looked to drop during the build-up and the middle third phase added another body to barcelona's midfield I also did take some notes of the players' responsibilities during the middle third of play as well. The central forward Lewandowski often dropped to receive the ball. The attacking midfielder Pedri made runs inside the right-hand channel between Madrid's left back and left side of centre back, which was helped by Dembele's very, very wide positioning. The left back Balde responsibility was to stretch the pitch and hold his whip out on the left-hand flank throughout the game. This allowed the left winger to cut inside. Frankie De Jong was a constant roamer, always looking for spaces to receive the ball and find spaces to be a effective of course and the centre backs were ball playing obviously <laughs> confident on the ball and they could progress with the ball via a carry and Sergio often recycled the ball or recycled possession for Barcelona. So the 3-2-5 that Barcelona looked to create would look something similar like this. So Dembele held his position out on the right hand side which allowed Pedri sometimes to attack this channel between well, the left back is here. So between the left back and the left side, the centre back, Pedri looked to attack this sort of area here. Lewandowski would occupy the two centre backs and this allowed Gavi to also occupy in between his channel here. Balde would be the left back advancing and being that fifth attacker. And then the back three would consist of Christiansen now on the left hand side and then Arujo would tuck inside. And here we kind of have our three at the back here, our two central midfielders of Frankie de Jong, Roman and being that link in between. And then we have our five in attack. 
I also spoke about Barcelona having more of a focus down the left hand side so here we can see Balde on the left hand side Gavi would kind of just change his position so he could drop deep or he can position himself narrowly Lewandowski would move over shift over to the left hand side and drop deep to also link up in this area and Frankie De Jong also had that responsibility or he had the freedom I should say to move forward he often moved forward and often enough in this game there was a heavy overload on the left hand side which was a game plan obviously the ball would then shift over to Sergio Busquets, Pedri can drop deep from his position here and then he was received the ball, get it out wide to Dembele and here we can see Dembele is now on a 1v1 against the left back where often enough in this game he drove on the outside and he put the ball inside the box. This image backs it up, Barcelona having a focus down the left side when approaching the chance creation phase, Lewandowski peels from the central area to drop and drift left, Frankie de Jong has also moved very high in this left area, he constantly roamed from his position to influence the game. This is the same image but now we're looking at Pedri, he's left his high position to drop, he can then receive to play out wide, part of Barcelona's positional play was to overload the left hand side to free up the right side and then Dembele can have that qualitative superiority over the full Back, similar to how Manchester United did it with Anthony. Another image of Barcelona focusing the left hand side, Lewandowski again left his central position to join the combination on the left. Both Sergio and Pedri are preparing to be involved and switch play. Barcelona have now worked the ball to Sergio who then plays the ball to Pedri and Barcelona have successfully transitioned to the right hand side gaining space and a 1v1, the right winger versus the left back. Balde was key on the left hand side because he was the one maintaining the width and here we can see in the blue the player circled in blue the left back constantly holding the width on the left hand side the player in yellow I mentioned about the um, two centre backs being ball playing defenders the central defender looks to progress with a carry but also looking for a line breaking pass here in white we can see Pedri looking to make that run inside the tunnel between the left back and the left side of the back and the left back is occupied by Dembele which kind of creates the gap in between the left back and the left side of centre back for Pedri to attack. Another image of the left back constantly holding his width during the build up and the middle third phase but Lewandowski often looking to drop deep. This was during the build up but Lewandowski remained being that extra midfielder for Barcelona, that extra man in midfield for Barcelona. Now it's time for the final third and Barcelona's chance creation at the top it does say middle third positional attacks that's obviously a mistake but Barcelona's chance creation against Real Madrid Barcelona were patient when they were creating chances not forcing opportunities and they were looking to work the ball into the box the wingers looked to make runs and get in behind Real Madrid's defensive lines and Dembele was a frequent crosser he constantly looked to beat his defender in a 1v1 duel before crossing the ball in half spaces or towards or near enough that byline what I have here on the right hand side as well is Barcelona shot maps and here we can see how they try to work the ball into the box by taking the shots inside the box rather than taking a lot of long shots and being more direct with their chance creation. Dembele here is trying to make a run in behind Real Madrid but he's also completely completely lost the left back here. Balde plays a lovely lovely through pass into Dembele's path and here is how they created a chance in the game. Barcelona were patient, they were trying to work the ball into the box, Herr Lewandowski is looking for a pass rather than a shot or a dribble towards goal. Now Lewandowski at Bayern Munich, we may have seen him actually looking at the goal, trying to work the ball onto his right foot so he can have a pop at goal, but at Barcelona things are a lot more patient and here he scanned the right hand side to see if there was a pass on, he's also scanned the left hand side, Gavi is open, he plays a pass to Gavi and then Gavi again in the box, he doesn't look at goal instead he plays a lovely pass across the goal and Pedri at the back post taps it in 2-0 Barcelona. Dembele here isolates his man in a 1v1 and looks to drive at him looking to beat him on the outside so Dembele he didn't often cut inside onto his left foot he's actually he's both footed so he can cut inside on his left foot a lot of the times during this game though he looked to beat his man on the outside and looked to put across here Dembele has now the beating of the fullback driving towards the byline and then Dembele sends in a driven low cross inside the box still looking to work an opportunity to shoot at goal
Lastly, now for some defensive and transitional notes. I've got it right this time up here. Barcelona defending and transitioning against Real Madrid. Barcelona looked to press Real Madrid high when Real Madrid were building out from goal kicks. Barcelona scored their first goal pressing high on a goal kick and scoring after winning possession. When preventing Real Madrid from playing out from the back, they looked to force them wide by cutting off the central passing lanes. They defended zonally and not man marking when the goalkeeper had the ball. Barcelona's pressing was really, really intense during this game, very often breaking their defensive shape to press the man on the ball. Barcelona held a medium to high defensive high. This was dependent on the match momentum. If the match momentum was swinging more to Real Madrid's favour, then they would defend in a medium or they would have a medium defensive line. But if Barcelona had the momentum, then Barcelona were defending higher up the pitch. Barcelona had a 4-4-2 defensive shape when Real Madrid had lengthy spells of possession and Barcelona also looked to counter press when they lost possession. When Real Madrid were building up from the back, Madrid were looking for a numerical advantage which they had. They had eight players deep versus um, Barcelona's six players. So Barcelona's six players, they worked really, really hard cutting off the central passing lanes and forcing Real Madrid on the outside where then Barcelona would have less options to play the ball but also it allowed Barcelona to then press intensely and you can see here as well how they look to cut off the passing the central passing lanes the goalkeeper here can't directly play to the number 10 number 8 or number 9 instead he has to look for a safe pass for number 4 and then this is how Barcelona worked very very hard cutting off the central passing lanes Lewandowski will often curve his run Peggy will cut off the central passing lane here number 4 again only has number 6 to play to which in this area here we can call Tony Cruz Tony Cruz will then often play to number three and this is where Barcelona can swarm and really really press intensely and number three would often have to play the ball down the line or he just has limited passing options because obviously he can't pass it to the left hand side because that is where the touchline is. Barcelona's players bodies positioning and shape suggest that they are attempting to force Real Madrid wide as we can see here again cutting off the central passing lanes. The CMs have cut off the central passing lanes here for Antonio Rudiger and and the Madrid defender only has one safe passing option and that's to the left back. Barcelona have successfully forced Real Madrid wide where they can press intensely. Barcelona held a high defensive line and this allowed them to be compact, have little space in between the lines. Here you can kind of see them operating in a 4-4-2 here but Gavi is just a little bit late in getting back and making this a 4-4-2 shape but in the next image here we can see more of that 4-4-2 defensive shape when long spells out of possession. Gavi would link up with Lewandowski Gavi being the attacking midfielder, he makes the two up top. Then we have the four midfield and four at the back. But unfortunately, that wraps up my brief analysis. Again, feedback will be hugely appreciated in the comment section or on my website. But now, finally, we are going to go into Football Manager where we're going to have a look at the tactic. We are also going to look at the results and also play a game against Real Madrid. So I'll see you in Football Manager. Welcome back to Football Manager. If you did like that tactical analysis, again, it will be hugely appreciated. If you can leave any sort of feedback in the comment section, but also if you did skip the tactical analysis bit, here is the Football Manager tactic where we are now going to deep or create the tactic, then look at the results and lastly, play a game. Make sure you are subscribed, leave a like and leave a comment on this video. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. But we are going to be starting here with that 4-2-3-1 four, uh, four, shape and already straight away, I'm just going to move the central midfielder into the middle and this allows us to have that sort of Frankie de Jong role slightly onto their left hand side. We are also going to move this uh, attacking midfielder to the right hand side and Lewandowski to the left hand side and this way we can have more kind of a natural focus towards the left hand, spot, uh, left hand side especially when building up and it also isolates the right winger on this right hand side as well. Today we'll start off with the player roles and their instructions. In goal we do have a sweeper keeper on support. The left back we're just going to give him the wing back on, on support. Ask him actually to take fewer risks because a full back or wing back on this game they love to take risks and actually we want to kind of hold the possession especially when building up. And actually wing backs tend to be fairly aggressive so we are also going to ask him to cross less often. He's aggressive. We want him to cross less and take fewer risks just help the side in the build up stages. The right back he's going to uh, stay wider actually because I know it's been Without this instruction, he didn't 
he, he tend to not stay wide, but it's also down how you want to interpret it to get that 325 shape. Actually, you may argue why not ask him to sit more narrow, but I really want to focus on getting that four plus two shape when building up. So I am going to ask the fullback on support to stay wider, but also again, cross less often because they like to cross. <laughs> and for the two center backs, we are going to be using two ball playing defenders on defend. And then for their player instruction, we are also going to ask them to stay wide. For the Sergio Biscuits role, we are going to be using a defensive midfielder on support, asking him to hold his position and take fewer risks. He's just there to recycle the possession for Barcelona. So I don't want him to be taking more risk with the ball. Somebody else is going to be doing that. And he's also going to hold his position. Sergi, he doesn't really roam and swap positions with anybody else. So I'm asking him to hold his position. Now for the Frankie de Jong role, we are going to be using a Roman playmaker i have asked him to play more direct passes um interestingly enough because frankie de Jong is a very very good uh, very good ball progressor in real life so that's what i'm trying to capture from real life his ball progression so i'm asking him to play more direct passing but also move into the channels get further up and just join join that attacking group on the left hand side and allow us to build that overload on the left hand side now for the gavi role we are going to be using an inverted winger on support this did start actually as an inside forward but i did change to an inverted winger for the number 10 role which is going to leave it as the attacking midfielder on support but we are going to add Rome from his position and also move into the channels I showed you a clip earlier of Pedri running into that channel the space that was created by the winger on attack Mr Dembele stretching the pay or stretching the play sorry constantly on that right hand side taking on defenders on the outside and putting the ball inside the box now I did mention earlier this was something similar to what Anthony did but when I'm doing these tactical um analysis I'm basing it of one game and that one game only someone on Twitter did mention that Anthony was more of a winger which generally I agree with but it was just that one Nottingham Forest game where I felt well he didn't send in a single cross throughout the game and he didn't he was wide majority of the game. Majority of the game, he was wide, which is why in that tactic, I did ask him to stay wider, but he was also no stranger of positioning himself in between the fullback and the centre-back just for that Nottingham Forest game, which is why I gave him the inverted winger. And this is why it's different to now today where I'm giving Dembele a winger because constantly Dembele was beating the man on the outside and whipping in balls as well, especially towards the byline. And lastly, up top, Lewandowski, a deep line forward on attack he's gonna drop deep and link up play in this sort of area here hopefully the inverted winger will cut inside and be more narrow allowing the wing back to get further forward and we can have a nice overload on the left hand side now it's time for the team instructions the mentality we are going to use positive we are going to play out from the back obviously focus down the left but also overlap on the left hand side just as Balde did for the passing directness shorter and for the tempo slightly higher but the passing directness in truthness I changed a lot I did change a lot but also don't skip this part because we got opposition instructions to talk about very important so hopefully you aren't skipping the video and missing important information the passing directness did change um the tempo as well did change a lot against the bigger teams I did go for the higher sometimes slightly shorter be a little bit more direct because Barcelona are not necessarily a heavy Every possession side I know a lot of us are expecting 65 70 percent possession from a Barcelona side but against Real Madrid they only had around 53 percent against the smaller side sometimes they do have over 60 percent but it's not actually sorry I stopped speaking as I was talking because I actually went to check the position stats so in the last game against Girona they had 57 percent of the ball against against Real Sociedad they had 68 percent same two against Getafe against Real Madrid they had 51 percent against uh Raul Batiste they had 57 then 58 percent so sometimes it is 72 percent 76 percent and then sometimes it does drop low to as low as 51 percent or a 56 percent Barcelona also like to work the ball into the box now in transition when the possession has been lost Barcelona like to counter press when possession has been won I've actually left this blank and similar with the goalkeeper in possession I left it blank but I do have take short kicks 
it's kind of very difficult to replicate what you're seeing in real life, right? Trying to get the goal kick to distribute the ball into a certain area is fairly difficult. So I did ask him to take short kicks. Lastly, for out of possession, we are going to be using a high press with a line of engagement, much more often trigger press, prevent the short goalkeeper distribution, but also invite crosses. Now this actually, it made our defense more narrow. We were conceding a lot of goals by conceding space in between defenders. So I just wanted to close that gap, make our defense a lot more narrow and make it a little bit more difficult to break down. The defensive line is left on standard. We are using a positive mentality. So majority of the time it's actually a fairly high um, defensive line. So I'm just going to leave it at standard. Now for the opposition instruction, which is very, very key because Barcelona did look to force the play out wide. And we're going to attempt that by using opposition instructions rather than the team instructions so what we do have here is the central players all the central players the center backs the defensive midfielders the central midfielders attacking midfielders we are all tight marking them just as Real Madrid did or just as Barcelona did the trigger press we do have trigger press always on the wider players as soon as the wider players that as soon as the wider players have the ball that is our trigger press and then the tackling so we are tackling hard against the wider players but for the central players actually we're standing on our feet again it's all about just cutting off the passing lanes rather than everybody tackling hard getting stuck in that's not what Barcelona did they looked to cut off the passing lane centrally and then they pressed aggressively and tackled aggressively out in that wider area and that there wraps up the tactic what we are going to do now is look at the results and also close this video off by playing the game so let's look at the results In La Liga, we finished with 101 points, winning 33 games out of the 38. The three that we lost, all away games, Celta Vigo, Real Madrid and Valencia, all three being 1-0 defeats. In the Copa del Rey, we won that. Actually, we won the Cadrubi. We won every single cup. Granted, though, we are Barcelona, a very good side. This video is not necessarily about the match results and the football manager tactic itself. It's also about... Well, you catching ideas for your own tactics and talk about how Barcelona plays. Hopefully you guys can catch your own ideas. You can download this tactic. Of course, there is a download link in the description, but also you can just catch ideas. I think people have the feeling that all my videos are just about you downloading the video and about the results. Actually, the results is the least important part, which is why it's near the end of the video. It's the least important part about this video. I don't necessarily care about the results. It's more so how the tactic performs and is it performing to how we want it to. So in La Liga, we did have the most possession with 62% of the ball. We did have the best pass completion. Most shots for and the fewest shots against. We come in second to Real Madrid. Real Madrid also scored more goals than us. We did complete the most dribbles. We had the most clean sheets and the fewest conceded. For the most goals, it is Lewandowski with 36 for the most assists. Frankie de Jong joins that list. Lewandowski had the most shots for. He had the the most man of the match awards as well. Key passes, nobody in the top eight for the best pass completion. Christian Sunter Stegen and Eric Garcia. It's nice to see that Ter Stegen isn't first here or the highest for Barcelona because it shouldn't be. He is attempting more direct passes. More tackles won. Nobody there. Most dribbles made for and Torres. Clean sheets, Ter Stegen and fewest conceded to Stegen. So that there is the results. Actually, we can look at the squad stats. Lewandowski scoring 48 goals in all competitions. Pedri with 19. Looking at the assists. Ferran Torres with 10. But everything is more spread out. Rather than one player assisting and one player scoring all the goals other than Lewandowski, the goals and assists is nicely spread out throughout the squad. Even the goals here, there's so many different goal scorers. So many different sco uh, goal scorers. But also, goal scorers scoring multiple co goals. Like Sergio Busquets with four goals. Kessie with four goals. Gavi with four goals, Rafinha with five, Ferran Torres with seven, and Ansu Fati with eight. But now we are going to play that game against Real Madrid. So this is the lineup against Real Madrid. We do have a couple players missing. I, I tried to replicate it as much as I could. We got Dembele out on the right hand side. Pedri as the number 10. Gavi as the left winger, which he played throughout the season. But we do have Sergio injured. Sergio, not Sergio Roberto, Jules Kunde injured and Ronald Arujo, which means that Eric Garcia is in, Frank Kessie's in and Hector Bellerin. This is the team. Let's go. We also have our opposition instructions all activated and prepped for this game. Pump our fists, tell the fans we are the favourites. Go out there and make the fans 
Hap fans, the fans happy. Here's Hector Bellerin with a throw in down the right hand side. Frank Kessie, Dembele inside the box. Pedri, and it's 1 0 to Barcelona. It's the teenage sensation. Pedri is on the score sheet. It was a lovely finish. Well worked uh, throwing as well. Here's Kessie, throws it into Dembele. Dembele inside the box, driven cross. I think it took a deflection and it fell to Pedri, and it's a nice, nice finish. Here's Ter Stegen, Frank Kessie, Frankie de Jong. Barcelona looking to play out from the back. Dembele out wide. It gets tackled, but Pedri picks up the ball. Here's Eric Garcia now. Plays it out wide to Christiansen. He's going to drive forward, being that ball playing defender. What a lovely run by Pedri again. What a, what a save. But Pedri making that run inside the channel is very, very dangerous. Here's Gavi whipping in the corner. Christiansen, oh my, what a save. Quartar is a joke on this game. And Danilo heads it out. Oh, what a save! Pedro hey, Quartar! Stop it, son! Stop it! So we have got in at half time 1 0. I do like to uh, look at the stats because it's very, very important. I tweak a lot during games. I don't just set one tactic and then just play, 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 play. If I'm losing, I'm going to tweak, which is why sometimes I get some really, really good results. But we are 1-0 up here and I've noticed our passes in attack aren't connecting. We've only got 65% uh, pass completion in attack compared to Real Madrid, who have 86%. So there is something that we can do in attack. So the tweak I'm thinking to make, the deep line forward, he's got Tate more risk moving to channels. Actually, we're going to get him to be a false nine. Pedri as an attacking midfielder on attack because I'm loving his movements. Dembele as a supportive winger. It is possible. It is possible we're losing a lot of the ball, trying to get the ball out wide into Dembele on attack. So we're going to have him on support, Pedri on attack, and we've changed Lewandowski to a false nine. Hopefully, hopefully we start to see our passes connect better in the second half I could drop the mentality possibly do that in this as the game goes on possibly yeah we're going to leave it on positive and then as the game go on we're going to keep an eye on the passing attack stats so already the passes has gone up to 70 percent 73 percent now so yeah we are connecting a little bit better but we aren't creating anything in the second half Here's Lewandowski, Balde, Gavi loses the ball out to Hazard, but wins the ball back immediately. Now here's Gavi driving towards goal. Gavi is very selfish. So we do have a corner. Gavi is about to whip this in. Lewandowski, and that wraps up the game. Deservedly, we did. Uh, we deserve to score that second goal, I feel. Quartar in the first half had an extraordinary game but we are definitely performing better in the final third I feel Real Madrid have had nine shots but they actually haven't created anything they've had one half chance throughout the whole game just the one so I do feel and I'm confident we've been the better side especially when looking at the XG so we'll just pause the game before it ends looking at the passes on attack so it's gone from what was it 68% I think or even below 60, uh, 68%, now it's on 73%. We've seen more of the ball, though our passing on this game was on shorter rather than much shorter. And yeah, sometimes during games, you will have to make tweaks. And that there wraps up the game. Barcelona 2, Real Madrid nil. And look at the um, rating as well. Look at the rating. So this isn't a tactic where we're going to get a lot of shots, like 30 shots and 40 shots, like a lot of football manager tactics does. It's kind of heavy with the possession so it is advised you're in a very very elite team like Barcelona and you can see here how important it is to have good players everybody performing well so that there wraps up today's video I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed recording it I'll see you guys soon shout out to my patrons as well as you guys will be getting early access to this video and all my videos that you've been doing recently I say recently it's just my last one <laughs> I'll see you guys soon stay safe God bless peace out Bloop.